Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode of Shooting Tungsten Film and Not a Single Images of a Gas Station. Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, I've been cooped up in the apartment for the past few days editing these dumbass videos, so I figured it was time to treat myself a little. So instead of binging cookie dough ice cream to the point where I puke, shit myself, and pass out, I decided I would go a little easier and just shoot a very special roll of film. So after digging through my box of film, I discovered that I hoard film more than Baxter hoards his toys. <laughs> But after I got over that, I remembered I had a roll of Portra 100T that was kindly sent to me by Reed Watson. Thanks, Reed. You are a shining beam of tungsten light in the darkness, and I apologize that I'm a lazy-ass degenerate that put off shooting this for so long. So is Portra 100T the Cinestill 800T killer? Let's find out. With my Canon AE-1 in hand and a one quarter pro miss slapped on the front of the lens, I headed out on my bike into the darkness. Oh yeah, I've gotten into biking a little bit lately. Guess I'll be buying a Subaru next and moving to Portland. So Portra 100T is a discontinued line of Portra that was balanced for tungsten light, or basically just any artificial lights in general. It's 100 ISO, and the role I have here expired in 2001. 2001 was about 20 years ago, uh, so the typical thing to do here is to overexpose one stop per decade. Though, as I've learned with my time here on YouTube, some people emphatically object to this guideline, and those are the type of people that are a lot of fun at parties. To be fair, it is just a guideline. It really only effectively applies to color negative film, and ultimately depends on variables like how it was stored or what ISO it is. So I took all that into due consideration before I ultimately just said f it and shot it at ISO 25. So I'll probably do 10 seconds. Uh, let's plug that into our reciprocity calculator. So 10 to the power of 1.3. Yep, again, 20 seconds. So 20 seconds at F4. Getting this thing off the tripod is such a pain in the ass. This tripod just grips the shit out of it. Now, obviously, ISO 25 is pretty damn low to be shooting at night. But as little John would say, get low. As explained in the song, Mr. John elaborates that getting lower ISO films might be beneficial if one is looking to render a finer grain image and produce substantially more extravagant colors. Because we're doing longer exposures, we're gonna have to address reciprocity, which of course is everyone's favorite topic. Basically, on the night that I shot this, I used a reciprocity factor of 1.3, as that's somewhere in the ballpark of most color negative films. I took this shot of a doorway and I was so convinced that it was gonna be straight fuego that I bracketed it just to make sure that I would nail it. I'm thinking maybe I'll do a double for, at a 20 seconds just to make sure, get the shot. It's, it's a really cool shot. But did I nail it? No. Cool.
Portra 100T was discontinued by Kodak in 2006, probably for several reasons. Probably the biggest reason was that the digital camera judgment day was well upon the world at that point. Many professionals who use this film for studio lighting, art documentation, night photography, etc. probably just said to hell with it and shelled out the big bucks for an epic two megapixel camera. Another reason might be that a lot of people, including Kodak even, might have thought that Ektar 100 was a more versatile film. I won't get into what I think of Ektar here, but regardless, it can go f itself. What? Holy crap. That was a big ass bird. That could have killed you, Baxter. That could have picked you up and flew you off to its nest. Yeah. Hey. hey, how's it going? Hi. Nothing like good old home movies. Oh yeah. yeah. Ready, set, go. If you're wondering how much this film cost back in the day, I found a old review from May of 2001 by the homie Ken Chan. Just kidding, I don't know who the f Ken Chan is. But in his review, he said, it's quite expensive at $7 a roll. Well, Ken, try to enjoy it. I'd hate to show you film prices today. Okay. All right, ready, steady, spaghetti, done. Unfortunately, a lot of these neighborhood shots turned out slightly blurry because I was rattling the camera while I was holding the shutter release and the 135 millimeter is extra sensitive to any movement whatsoever. Like how for some reason my nipples are extra sensitive after I watch The Notebook. Reciprocity, that's about 55 seconds. Don't bump the tripod, Baxter. Or are you going back to the pound? Since this film's as dead as Luke Skywalker's parents, it may be kind of hard to find. When I recorded this, there were some eBay listings for this film in 120 that listed it for about 25 bucks a roll. Later on, I returned to everybody's favorite pool, but instead of capturing the wide shot that apparently I can't live without, I decided to throw on the 135 millimeter and capture some vignettes. Before I wrap this video up, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you're looking to build a website, Squarespace has the smoothest and most intuitive user interface. You don't need to download any plugins, patches, or 12-hour software updates that frankly don't change anything. Squarespace has professional, easy-to-use templates for whatever it is that you do. Photography, music, flaming jump rope, everything. As a photographer, I've been using Squarespace for about four years now, and it's just the perfect setup to exhibit my portfolio, as well as create an all-in-one hub for access to my print shop, my channel, and other social media links. If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Anyway, is Portra 100T gangsta or not gangsta? I think it's gangsta. I love the saturated colors, especially the reds and yellows that it seems to bump up. They apparently made this film for 120 as well as large format sheets, and I gotta say, I think this film would be really cool on 120. Portra 100T is, in general, a much more saturated film than Cinestill 800T, but I think overall, I'm not really a fan of the low ISO, especially when it's expired and you kind of have to rate it two stops over. I realize that you can't really have a film that does high ISO and high saturation, but hey, a girl can dream. Ultimately, I don't think this film was as expired as maybe it could have been, but regardless, I think the shots turned out pretty cool, which is surprising to me because I suck. This is my favorite shot. I think the composition is pretty solid and the colors and glow make it feel very moody. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go throw up.